right. Hey, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and it is that time. So welcome. Here I am. Let me solo that. There we are. All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and I'm live in my studio here, uh, my studio at beadshop.com. I'm hanging out today, and I promised you um since we um uh, the last great bead extravaganza you know i did some riveting which was shall i say it riveting and uh i posted some fun things on patinas as well so uh i promised today i'd share that stuff with you so today we're going to talk about patinas it's going to be live action uh so we'll see how it goes that's the joy of going live it's great uh to see everybody here and my buddy tammy it's good to see you tammy oh someday we'll be together again it's great to see you um so I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to turn this whole thing around, and I've got stuff set up across the way from me here. So I'm going to try and juggle a whole bunch of hats, including the camera, the comments, what I'm doing. So uh, so bear with me today, okay? Um, I also before we get started though, let me just do a couple of housekeeping things, okay? Um, of course, you can see me sometimes here on the weekends in my studio here at beadshop.com. You can see me live. Uh, you can also see me on Wednesdays and some Fridays uh, on the beadshop.com uh, uh, Facebook group and YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching me today on the Kate Richburg YouTube channel, give that a like and a thumbs up. If you're watching on Great Bead Extravaganza, it's great to have you here. If you're watching on any of my social, it's great to have you here. So let me throw some uh, cards up so you can find me. You can follow me at Bead Kate, of course, on Insta. You can like and subscribe right here on the YouTube at Kate Richburg. You can join my group, Create with Kate Richburg, or my page, Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator. And you can find all of my, I don't know, various things that I'm up to right on my website. You can also find me on beadshop.com. You can follow us, beadshop.com on Insta, um, the bead table, our Facebook group on, uh, it's, it's hopping right now, you guys. We're in um, the middle of a hashtag bead done with it. So we're finishing projects right and left over there. And of course, if you're watching, you can like and subscribe on the beadshop.com channel so i think that's almost that's almost it one more thing and i'm going to talk about it at the end of the broadcast as well i've got a class coming up it's a virtual class with live demos and class interaction via zoom i'm super excited you know me i love to teach teaching is my jam and so i thought a little summer class on riveting um we're going to do a lot of fun stuff and the class is actually filling up. There's only a few slots left. You can find me over at katerichburgjewelry.com uh, for more details on that. It's going to be a, a, a full class. You'll have interaction with me and the students uh, with each other. And don't worry about tools, you guys. If you're missing tools, it's no big deal. I'm going to send out an email a little bit later this week to all the students who are enrolled, um, and we'll get you your tools. We'll figure all that out. So don't sweat it. Okay, if you have a minimal amount of tools, that's great. If you want to add to your tool inventory, that's great as well. Okay, all right. I think that's all of the housekeeping. So I'm going to um, grab my stuff and I'm going to go over to uh, the demo cam here. Uh, and I'm going to turn this big camera around so I can see what's going on and whoops, something fell, but I'm going to pretend it didn't. And let's take a look, uh, at some patinas, shall we? So, um, patinas, oh, let me get my notes. Cause I also made some notes. So I know what I'm doing here. Uh, if you're a metal worker at all, right, work with metal. And I hope that you do. I hope that you love it as much as I do, um, that patinas are kind of like the finishing touches on your metals, right? And patinas can run the gambit from just a simple silver black or liver sulfur all the way to super fancy like blue, green patinas, sometimes rust 
Poutine's rust is something I'm going to have to um, address someday. I love working with rust patina, um, and I don't see it used that much. So that'll be a good one. Uh, let me just turn this around so I can see your comments here. Bear with me here. Um, but today, we're going to talk about this blue patina, okay? And you saw this over, if you were watching over on the great bead extravaganza, our buddy Andrew Thornton, he threw this challenge down, like, you know, Andrew, it's crazy, <laughs> in the most best way possible. He threw down this challenge, and I'm not one to say no to a challenge. So I, uh, his challenge was use natural materials, the color blue, and the number six. So I pulled some blue, so it got me thinking, oh my gosh, I have some blue metal that I really love, so I'm going to go with that. So I pulled three pieces of my patinaed metal, this one here, this circle, and this one. And then I had this really killer I Ching coin that had kind of some bluish patina to it, and that's natural patina because this is an old coin. And then I have a piece of Leland Blue, that slag there that was made by Gary Wilson, um, lapidaried by my buddy Gary Wilson, really gorgeous, right? And this Russian Blue vintage trade bead. And if you really like African trade beads, you can find some more over on Bead Shop. Um, this was one that we carried a while back. Um, we carry some different Russian Blues right now but um, I love them. So there are my six pieces. What these are gonna evolve into, I don't even know. Maybe I'll do another um, live demo and make those um, live. I don't know, but at least I've got that, at least that challenge. At least I started with that, but I need to put those together eventually. But it got me thinking, you guys, that um, patinas are something that um, sometimes elude us as jewelry makers, right? So I, I thought I'd do just a quick little demo. Um, and they're perfect since I'm kind of in this riveting mode right now, that they're perfect for riveting and working, you know, with cold connections. So this is the piece that I showed that was the actual title card for this piece and I did this two-sided. This is a blue patina, we're gonna talk about that. And we're just gonna to touch on this green patina here as well. So let me show you um, what, and people are still jumping in. Uh, they're stoked to be here. I'm stoked to have you. Welcome everybody. It's great to, to see all y'all uh, watching live. And if you're watching this on replay, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate all of your support always. Um, without you guys, we couldn't be here. Um, I guess that's royal we. <laughs> we couldn't be here doing what it is that we love. So thanks so much. So for this um, blue patina that I've got here, this is what I've used um, for that patina. And I'm going to show you. I've got one in process, and I haven't opened it yet. Okay, so we're going to open it live on air. Um, and take a look at how the patina is developing. But this blue patina comes uh, from a fumed, it's a fumed patina, and I use ammonia. Now, when I bought this ammonia, usually I use clear ammonia. Um, and I think when I moved from my old studio to this, I got rid of some chemicals or whatever, or I brought it home, or I don't know, but I didn't have any. So when I did this a while back, I don't know, maybe it was, well, it probably wasn't 2020, so it was probably 2019. The only ammonia I could find was lemon, and the lemon scent works fine. So it's either uh, clear ammonia or the lemon ammonia is fine. That's what we're going to use, okay? For this um, patina, this blue one, you're also going to use salt, and that salt is going to help it um, help it develop, right, and react. And then you're going to need some water because you're going to do this wet. Okay, I also have some uh, these green patinas here, and we're going to talk a little bit about why the patina didn't take in certain places, right? Um, and we're also going to talk about how to seal these guys because this one has been sealed for sure. Okay, so let's let me start um, by saying uh, a little bit about safety, right? Right here, I'm working next to my open door. So there's lots of fresh air coming in, um, but especially with ammonia, ammonia can be quite 
pungent. So you want to make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area and that you're wearing some safety glasses so that you don't have splashback. Um, you may want to wear like a mask or a dust mask to help with that. Um, but you really want to make sure that you're focused, you're thinking about safety, your safety, and the safety of others around you. We're also going to wear some gloves. And I know this past pandemic year, um, we all got used to wearing gloves a lot of places. So I have a big stockpile of um, plastic gloves. So that's always great. Anytime you're working, I, you know, even when I use liver of sulfur, and liver of sulfur is not particularly harmful because it's a base, it's not an acid. So, um, but I do uh, like to wear gloves, uh, or if I'm working with silver black or something that's a little more caustic, we'll wear our gloves here. So we'll wear our gloves uh, right now while we're working with this. Um, I also want you to keep in mind these patinas, and let me get a little closer to all y'all so you can see this. And you'll see this when I open this box and it's really exciting. It's like Christmas. I haven't opened it yet and I kept it for you guys. I don't know. It may all end in tears. Who knows? But at least we've got these really good representations here. That when you work with patina, it's usually not a repeatable result. Okay. So you're going to get a lot of options, even if the conditions on your metals or where you're working or whatever are the same, they can't always be exactly the same, right? So these types of patinas are organic in nature and they aren't really that repeatable. So when you approach patinas like this, I want you to approach them with an open mind, okay? Um, the first step, and before we get to that blue that's cooking over in that box, we're going to prep some metal. And that's one of the reasons why, let me bring this back in. Can you see how here on this side of this metals here and here that the patina did not stick, it didn't develop. And that's because the metal was dirty, right? I was probably a little slapdash when I did these. And you can see here at the backs, some of it didn't take there. It took more in some spots than others. You can see here. But that's also, I think, part of the patina itself, right? And or the adventures with the patina. This piece, you can see, I cleaned it a lot better, right? It's a lot, it's a lot more uniform and stuff. So cleaning your metal, and this goes uh, for the same, uh, the same um, for when you're doing enameling as well. And I'm going to work with copper today. Okay, so these results will be different if you're using different metals as well. So, but copper is great to take these two patinas, this blue patina with the fumed ammonia. And then I'm also going to touch on using this Jax and we'll talk about that as well. Okay, but first let's get to cleaning. I have a dish of water here. Usually I do this at the sink right? And not with a dish of water. And what you want to do is you want to abrate the metal, okay? So the metal, you can see here, if I kind of turn it to the light, see how it has like all these fingerprints and all this business on here? We've got to really clean this. So what I do is for, um, not only do I use one of these scrubby pads, this is like a metal, whoops, a metal scrubby pad um, that I have, one of those metal ones. You can use a green one. Sometimes you use those for dishes, right? That'll work as well. Um, but I also use a, a cleanser and, I, you know, you can use any type of cleanser. I use this um, barkeeper's friend because usually I can find it. It's for brass, for copper, and for tile. Okay, so it works really well. So I'm going to just put a little bit here out on my on my paper towel here. And I'm going to get my sponge wet or, and dip my metal as well. And by just picking up a little bit of this cleanser, I'm going to really get after it right here. Okay. So you can see I'm scrubbing and scrubbing. This little metal scrubby sponge, if you've used it on metal before, you know it gives um, a slight tooth to the metal, which also isn't a bad idea when you're working with metals. So now I'm going to dip it. I'll rinse it. I would do both sides. And I want to show you, see how on this piece, how the, the water sheets across. It doesn't bubble, you know, it doesn't 
kind of go in little bubbles or little spaces. It sheets across the surface. That's what we're looking for. Again, when you're also enameling with metals, you want that same sheeting action, okay? And you can scrub it in one direction or in circles or whatever, but as long as you really get that metal as clean as you can. Now, when uh, you wanna do this, right when I've got another water over here that I'm gonna dip it in. When you clean your metals, you wanna clean your metals right before you put them under the patina, okay? You don't want to give them any, any time to get any more finger oils or dust or dirt or whatever. And really look at it underneath and see how the water sheets across. I see here that maybe it's not sheeting quite as well, so I might come back in and give these corners a little bit of a scrub. But it's looking pretty good, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside for a second, and we're gonna come back to this, okay? But let me show you uh, what I did earlier, and then we're, we're gonna see. I, I don't even know <laughs> what's gonna happen. So here is a little plastic bin that, uh, so on Friday, when I came, when I was working on this on Friday, and I said, you know, I'm gonna prep for this demo. These type of patinas, and I need to get actually a whole bunch more of paper towels, so bear with me. You can look at that while I talk to you. Um, this patina, when you do a patina blue or a patina green, it sometimes, well, not sometimes, it has to develop over several days, okay? So um, this isn't something that you're going to get right away. So I put this together on Friday, okay? And so I put it in, I have a little takeout container. I'll show you. And then I have like this plastic shoe box with a lid, okay? So this is a fuming patina, right? So it's fumed. The fumes from the ammonia help this metal to patina. So let's see what we've got here. And you can see I've, ooh, and it is, it definitely is fumed. I can definitely smell this. You can see what I've got here is I've got this little takeout container. I put some little wire branches across it, right, to kind of hold it up. And in the bottom here, I have a paper towel that's soaked with the ammonia. And then what I did to start this out was I got this wet, just with water. I sprinkled salt on it, and now we're here, okay? Now the salt is on here, so I'm gonna kind of brush it off and We're going to see what that patina looks like underneath. Look at that blue. Isn't that kind of incredible? Now, you want to be kind of careful with this. The next step of this is that I'm going to need to let this dry, right? It's been in the fuming chamber for a while. So I'm going to kind of tamp it down with some paper towels, tamp it. And I'm actually gonna set this outside while we're talking about things, I'm gonna set this outside in the sun. But look at that blue, how that's developed, right? We don't wanna rinse it, right? We just wanna dry this on there now. So this, as I say, I did this on Friday at the end of the day before I left. And so Friday at probably four o'clock my time, put it in that fuming chamber. And today is Sunday, so it's been sitting. And you can see that's ready to go. I'm just gonna kind of tilt it in this little lid and I'm gonna put it outside. But let me do this other one here as well. Okay, there's the front and the back. And see my edges? So you know that wasn't quite as clean as it could have been because I was probably rushing. So let's get some of the salt off of here. 
And I could always come back in and, you know, play around with this a little bit more, but I've got a couple of other solutions that I'm going to chat with you about. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. And sometimes, you know, patina is a natural kind of occurring process. So I'm not too worried about everything being super perfect. So if I have these spots of light, shiny copper, I'm okay with that, really. So here's this. Let's keep kind of tamping this, drying, brushing the salt away with a light touch. Then I'm going to go set these outside, and we're going to really let them dry. You could also probably further this process with a heat gun. Sometimes I've been known to do that. But it's super sunny outside, so I'm going to just do that. Okay, so let me go put these out here, right in the direct sunlight. Okay. And they're going to sit there. So let me show you uh, a little bit more about my fuming chamber. And I've got this piece of metal that I, um, that I use so we can kind of look at that. Here's the fuming chamber that I have here. Here's that paper towel with the ammonia here. And I could probably just reuse that, right? Here's my, look at how nice the wires have patina. But see, I just put a little wire through the side here and, and through here like this. So that kind of holds everything up. And then all I do really is I dip my metal like this. Oh, is this gonna sit on there? Yep, you can see that. And see, there's a little bit of action there that isn't, it's not completely sheeting. So let me just scrub that a little bit more. Since this is a small piece of metal, just bear with me here just a moment while I get that really, really as clean as I can. Let me rinse it again. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna set that there for a second. Um, I'm going to get, well, maybe I'll make a fresh little ammonia pad. I don't have to reuse that one. I'll take this out. I'll take this out and get rid of it. And then, you know, there's also, do you want to pre-cut your shapes beforehand or afterwards, right? And that's something that you kind of need to decide. I kind of like doing sheets of patina and then working with them afterwards, but you have to be kind of careful because the patina can crack, okay? So if you do decide that you wanna cut your shapes and stuff first, you can do that, and then all of the edges and everything will be patina. So, um, you know, it, it just depends on how you wanna work, okay? So here's my little pad, and I'm gonna open up my ammonia and just sprinkle it down, okay? There we go. Whew, ammonia is stinky, okay? So again, that's just simple household ammonia. And if you've missed any of this broadcast, you can come back in. Um, I'll leave it up. It's gonna be on my YouTube channel forever. Um, it'll be in the on my uh, various Facebook groups and in the Great Beat Extravaganza. So you can come back and watch at your leisure, okay? So this is now, uh, I just get some salt and I'm gonna, I just kind of place that on. Let me lift the camera a little bit and we'll just salt this like so. And I put kind of a generous coating of salt on here, and it sticks. It sticks enough. Then I'll flip it, and the, the salt will stay because the, the metal is wet. And we'll sprinkle it on this side. Okay? And if you feel like it needs to be a little wetter, you can get a spray bottle and spray a little bit of water on there if you want, okay? Now, all I do 
is I put a lid on this and somewhere uh, in my moving my studio around and stuff, I lost the lid <laughs> of this one, which is why I grabbed this shoebox container. So I put um, this other lid on top of it, which I can put this one on to kind of seal it up, but it doesn't completely seal. So I grabbed one of these little plastic shoe boxes. I'll put it inside like that. So it's kind of a double chamber. And I could set it outside if I wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead that's the wrong. I'm like, that doesn't fit. Let me put it in the right, in the correct box here. I'm going to put it outside also in the sun to, oh, and that's where I put that other lid. It's outside. That's all right. I'm going to put it outside in the sun to kind of help it speed up the development here. So let me put that out there. And uh, let's check on our pieces that are drying out here. So I'm going to grab these and you'll be able to see how these are coming along, okay? But this, um, see how this, now you can get a little more of that salt off there because it's a little drier, right? And plus we don't want this to be kind of super lumpy and bumpy. I don't know, you might, right? And it would stay when you sealed it. But now that things are a little bit more dry, I can, take a little bit more of this surface off by just using my gloved hand. And I can feel that. Um, a good question that Donna has, let me put it up here. Uh, Donna asks, any specs on what kind of salt uh, to use on this? Um, no, uh, no. <laughs> I use the salt that we have here at the office. I have one over there that's like a Morton salt. So I don't think it matters. You also might want to try um, kind of strategically maybe using like big rock salt, which I've never done, which I've always wanted to use. Um, so maybe the size and the shape of the salt matter, um, but the type of salt certainly does not. Um, I, I wouldn't use your uh, fancy Himalayan pink salt, but um, but I would, uh, but try it out. So, and see, look at, look, you guys, after getting that salt off that surface, look at that. It's really, I don't know. I just like these for um, the patina's sake. You know what I mean? Having these um, little squares of patina metal around just really, um, I don't know. They really forward my imagination, I think. Right. So we're going to also uh, seal these patinas because unfortunately, this patina, it's not going to be as stable as you wanted it, to, as you want it to be if it isn't sealed. Okay. So I'm going to talk about sealants in a second. All right. So we'll get there, I promise but let me just finish getting the rest of these off. I'm going to put this back out in the sun for just a few. Um, turn it over, just bake it just a little bit more there while we continue to talk. Okay, so let me put it back out here. It's a beautiful day here in Redwood City, California. Gorgeous. I can't complain. So let me also rinse my hands off. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this Jax patina, just real quick, okay, before we get, um, because I promised you that I'd do that, okay? So, <clears throat> um, here's the green patinas that I used. And there's several different um, brands of patina that you can use of the green patina. But this is the green patina by Jax. Um, and essentially you do the same darn thing with this. Now you can continue, what I do with the Jax, and I should have prepared another piece of metal. Let me see if I, um, let me see if I can just, do I, oh, you know, I have, 
I have a couple of metal blanks over here. I have one from my demo from last week. Let me just let me just grab one of those here. There we go. It's just a little square, but it'll show you it'll show you what you need to know. Um, with this Jax, it it couldn't be easier to deal with. Okay. What I like to do with the jacks, um, and you don't need to fume it or anything. I'm going to come here. Here's my little square. I'm going to um, I'm going to scrub it real quick, and then I see out of the corner of my eye, Trish has a, a really great question that I'm going to address in a moment. So let me just scrub this down right here and flip it over and scrub it. When I do the scrubbing, usually I'm by the sink and not in front of a demo cam, but um, you get the idea. Okay, so here's my little my little square and you can see how that water is sheeting on there. So we're good to go. Now what I would do with this and what I'm going to do here is sometimes I use a binder clip to hold my metal. Okay, so I can um, so I can hold it while I spray. Oh, I see my just my buddy Carrie's on. Carrie, I missed I missed you. Carrie from Alpen Glow Industries. She's a super accomplished everything smith, uh, knitter, inventor, scientist, all of those things. And someday she and I are gonna do an epic dual broadcast class, solder, electronics, jewelry, something, something. I can't wait for that to happen. Um, so all I'm going to do here with this Jax is I'm going to spray this sucker. That's it. Spray it. Turn it. Spray it. Now I can use these little guys Sometimes I can make these stand up if I'm not wearing gloves. And I'll stand it up like that. I'm going to go stand, uh, put this outside under some heat, and let's see what happens. Okay? But that's it for the green. And the green you can layer, right? You can spray. Sometimes I layer and spray and do all kinds of business with it. So it's out here, and it's drying. I'm grabbing the blue again and then now we're going to talk about sealing and this was a really good question i'm going to get myself a fresh thing here all right so bear bear with me let me clear this up you go through a lot of paper towels kids a lot of paper towels so i was a paper towel hoarder before the pandemic so but i'm so thankful things are slowly starting to normalize at least for us here, there's so many places around the world who are still having so many troubles. So I like to keep everybody in my thoughts while we're still struggling to fight our pandemic. But um, here's hoping that things are going to be on the up and up, right? So here we go. Here's our blue. And there's a couple of questions here that I would like to address, okay? And I'm sorry, I didn't. I don't know who this is. Um, Facebook sometimes in groups doesn't uh, show me your name unless you uh, say yeah, Streamyard. You can show me uh, who it is. So I'm sorry, I don't know who it is. But the question is really a good question. Will Florida humidity affect this process? Yeah, I think humidity, um, heat, cold, weather, um, air, wind, it all will affect. And that's kind of the beauty of patinas right, is that they are so natural. Um, it's an organic process, so you never quite know what you're going to get. All right, so um, so it's, uh, so it, and it costs you nothing, really, except a little bit of metal to do some experimentation, right? So make your little uh, experimental squares and, and give it a go, right? Um, here's another question that Trish had. Now, if we did one side, set the blank side on wood or cork and then pour resin over it, uh, I think those would look great. Those would look great. And Trish, I don't think the patina will interfere with the curing process of the resin. 
what I would do, and you're going to see, I'm going to actually paint some um, sealant onto um, the patina here, and you're going to see how it does affect it. When you seal your patinas, it is going to affect the color, the intensity of the color a little bit, right? Because it just, that's kind of how it is, right? The coating kind of refracts the light a little bit different, so the colors look differently, okay? Then there was a couple other, this is a great question too that Lori has. Can you solder once the patina is applied? No, patina is the last very, 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 very last step with the exception of something like this where these pieces have been sealed and I'm gonna cold connect them. Okay, and I'm actually probably gonna seal these one more time and maybe I'll use one of these to seal today. But you really want to seal these before you use them. And then I'll come in and I'll rivet these. And the riveting, if it affects the patina a little bit, so be it. Doesn't matter, really, right? But no, the torch will take all of this patina right off. I also wanted to show you, probably now is a good time to talk about it. Here's this piece that I cut post. I, I made the patinaed sheet first. Okay, and then I cut this out in my hydraulic press using a pancake die. Okay, so can you see, and I think I, I think, you know, I did these a while back. So you could cut it out, then seal it, or seal it, then cut it out. It doesn't really matter. But can you see how I lost a little bit of the patina around the edges, which I actually don't mind because I feel like it looks like a little bit of a frame. But some of you may be familiar with uh, Vintage, Vintage. Um, they coupled with Ranger and created a series of metal patinas. This one is lapis. So I could, um, and they really need to be shaken. So I'm going to shake, shake shake this like I mean it. And I use these metal patinas a lot. I like to use them on coins. Um, I like, I use them. And if any of you guys follow um, Andrew Thornton or Cynthia Thornton from Green Girl um, or Andrew from Allegory Gallery, uh, you know that they dig working with these patinas as well. Okay. So something like this, if you have these edges or something's a little funky, you can come in I'm going to place a little bit of this patina in here for the moment because I'm not really quite sure what it looks like. So here's a little bit of that blue. Okay, and this is metal patina. So this is not a, um, it's not a chemical. It's more of a, of a, of a surface patina, right? It's, for lack of a better term, a paint. Um, but it's especially made um, for metals and I like setting these with a heat gun so I would apply this and then come back in and set it with a heat gun but I can get a little bit of that and I can come in and I can add that to my organic patina here right I'm just using a cotton ball And I don't want to be too heavy handed and I can come in, I could let that dry and then come over it with another set of color. Okay, let me get a little bit more. I'm going to do these edges and then I'll set this one aside. And I will set this with a heat gun or putting it outside in the good old sunshine. It's going to do, you know, it's going to heat set this. Get a little bit more in here. I like these uh, vintage patinas. Like I say, I use them a lot. You can layer them. Um, there we go. I want to be a little more heavy handed with this. I think it would be really fun to do kind of like an installation on just these, right? Just make some really killer patina squares. You can come smaller like the one by one squares that are in my book, right? In my metal smithing book. Um, and kind of just have them as pretty things. Tammy was saying earlier that that green patina made her super happy. Well, Tam, just make some squares, some samplers, and let them make them be happy in your studio. 
look at this, you guys and gals. <laughs> Trying to be more not so. But it's a California thing, saying guys all the time. Hey, guys. Look, look, look. I, just, I can't take it. I love it so, so, so much. I'm going to put this outside. Okay. And we're going to take a look at this other one here. Let's talk ceiling. Okay. Oh, and as I come outside, this Jax one that I've set out here, I set it out in the sun, we've already got some action. Look, look what we've got so far. So I'm going to spray this down again. I'm going to set it back outside. Right? Keep going. Okay. I'm going to let that, let that do its thing. Uh... So what we've got here, I'm going to try and remove a little more of this salt so I get to a little more of the metal. This has had a couple of rounds in the sun. And can you see how I'm really starting to get some nice business going on here? So let's put this, do you want to see how this might look in the disc cutter? Shall I cut it before I seal it? Let's do that. Let me cut a piece out of this, okay? Let me get the disc cutter. And um, I want two good size discs. Here we go. It's going to be a little loud because I'm going to hammer, but that's okay. Got my disc cutter here. And this size that I'm going to cut, the 7 8 circle. And I'm going to come in. Close that bad boy up like that. Let me grab my hammer. I'm going to mute. Well, hopefully, I don't know. It won't be too loud while I hammer. If it is, just let me see if I can mute. I'm going to hammer, and then, yeah, I'm going to mute this just so it's not like a ridiculously loud. So I'll be right back. I'm muting now. There we go. That was fun. Let's lift this up and let's see what I've got. So see how when it's not sealed, I lose a little bit of this edge, but I'm not especially fussed about that. Okay, so we'll use, I'm going to use a couple of these. I'm going to do one more. So I have kind of a, a set I'm going to mute again. I'll be right back. There we go. Let's lift. Take that up. Take this out. I'll also do some experimenting on this. These would also make cool windows, right? Like you could put something behind it, right? If I left a little more room there, I could put some something else behind this and then rivet this all together, right? And yeah, Emily's saying she likes the copper reveal, the edge. Yeah, I do too, right? Right? I, I like it. Um, and this is the ammonia patina. This is the blue one. So it's not the jacks. Um, the jacks needs to develop, so you could respray and redevelop and stuff like that. Um, all of that will will work. I'm looking for my spray. Um, here we go. This is, you can use a lot of different types of sealers in your pieces, okay? 
Um, I have two that I'm going to use today. There's that one. Uh, I'll show you in a second. I don't know why I left them so far from me, but I did. Here's my Protect-A-Clear. We're going to talk about Protect-A-Clear. And then we're going to talk about a spray sealant. So one of the things with the Protect-A-Clear that I didn't do, and I thought I had some here and I didn't, was I use Protect-A-Clear. Sometimes I dip. Sometimes I use a sponge brush. Well, I didn't have a sp I thought I had a stash here, but I didn't. So I have these makeup sponges in my um, in my patina box of patinas. So I'm going to use them and we're going to see how they coat. OK, the other coating that I use is I'll use an acrylic sealer or finisher, um, a matte one. I like it matte rather than shiny, but you do you. You do what works for you. And I think these are sprayed with that matte sealant right here. So I'm going to respray these guys. I'm going to put them in this little box. I'm not going to spray it on camera. I'm going to take it right outside and spray just real quick. But I'll do this, and I'll do a light little spray. So hang on. Uh, I'm taking them outside, what you can't see. So pretend this is like a podcast. You have to kind of imagine, right? But you want to do this in a well-ventilated area, right? And you want to make sure that you just do a really light spray. And I just did a super light spray on those. You can hardly tell that they were resprayed. But I'm going to let those sit there for a second. And again, this is super stinky. But Krylon makes one. This Deco Art makes one. Um, you can find them in like where they carry um, the spray paint and stuff. Okay. So let's look at. Let me get things that are unnecessary out of my way. And I'm going to grab uh, a couple more binder clips because these are since they're small they're kind of hard to um, handle that's why I like sometimes doing the bigger piece and then making things out of the bigger piece because um, the small pieces can be a little bit fussy to deal with but so the protective clear here we go I'm going to open this up again well ventilated area I'm going to decant just a little. I don't need much for what I'm doing. And I need to wipe this edge so it doesn't dry and seal. And protect a clear. Looks like this, right? Just a clear sealant. Um, it's my jewelry sealer of choice, metal sealer of choice, right? We get it down in there nice and tight. Um, and you can get it. I, I like doing a couple of, of um, coats of this. So here's my, um, I'm going to put these right on the edge as little as possible. Find a, an edge there. There we go. So what this is going to do, you guys, and pretend this is a sponge brush and not a makeup sponge. I'm going to start here at the side. See how it darkens it a bit, right? And it may disturb the patina just a little. But you want to get plenty of Protect-A-Clear on either your brush or your sponge so that you're not wiping it away, right? You're floating it on top. See that? You can kind of see the amount that I have on here. And yes, uh, Carlene has a question about metal shears. Yeah, you sure could use metal shears to cut your shapes. You bet. I just used my disc cutter because that's what I had. But you could definitely use it. I like the I have some pro shears on my website. I really like them. Those metal shears. But look at what the protect clear side. See how it it almost enriches the patina. 
here's the unprotected cleared side protect to clear so I'm going to kind of lean that up in my little bin I don't know if I'm using protect to clear like it's a like it's a verb right that disc has been protect to cleared anyway so here's that and here's that and then I'll bring these outside but look at that you guys so it does take down the patina a bit, but it seals it. So you can use these and not worry about your patina coming off, right? So here's this. Whoops. I didn't grab it quite. As much as I need it. There we go. See that? And I could dip this also if I wanted to. Is there a little bit more that I can dump on the top of this? I think I've used, there we go. Kind of roll it around. There we are. And you want to make sure that you don't have too much. So I'm going to take a little bit of that away with the sponge. There we go. So these are ready to dry. Okay, so I'll let them dry. So that's it, really. Okay, so just to go over again, and you can watch this again and again on replay. And now's the time, if you have any more questions, you guys, now's the time to ask. But, and someone also said here, we can use protect clear to stiffen bead weaving. That is great to know. You'd probably just dip it and let it dry, and it would stiffen. Um, but I used for that fuming, that ammonia with fuming, um, and you saw me make that little chamber. Uh, this is the lemon scented ammonia, but it doesn't matter what you use, right? With the salt, and you can use any type of salt that you have laying around. And then that green patina I did with the Jack's green patina. And you can see I kept spraying several different layers and letting it build up and stuff like that. So that was that guy there, okay? So one final last look. Let's see how these out here are looking. Um, my Jax is really starting to do its thing. I could also put it in um, its own little chamber. And see, this one's a lot bluer and not as green. Maybe it's because I'm heating it fast, right? But so I've got that one going on. And here's that one that I added the vintage patina around the edges, right? Um, and you can see how it's just starting to, to come in. So this one, I will also um, uh, do the, the sealant on those. You can see my friends over here are really starting to kind of um, get a nice, that nice sealant. I'm gonna do the sealant on this side as well, like this, right? So that will, uh, that will happen. Um, and you can see that spray sealant that I used earlier, that spray sealant's a little different, right? It's not as thick and heavy as the protective clear. But again, I do this, I need to do the back. I would spray this probably two or three times light sprays to really seal that patina in, in there as well. Okay, so that's that. So it looks, uh, there's a couple of questions here. Um, Trish is asking, Will this work on brass or other metals? Um, I believe it will. Um, the fume patina, I'll be honest, I really only do it on copper, um, but I need to try brass, I guess. Um, but I think that that patina, um, the green patina will work on copper, brass, and bronze. So I am I have a feeling that it will, that it will work. Um, it just might give you a little bit of a different um, outcome. And then, um, Stamili is saying, will glue or other adhesives work and allow me to add some shells to the blank? Sure. After this is done here and sealed, uh, you could certainly glue uh, to the front of that. Um, I don't think that you'd have a problem um, <clears throat> with any of the results from that. You can certainly make a little test run and see. I don't want to put that in that mess there. 
but you can kind of, you know, uh, do a few little testers and see how that all works. But there are all of these patinas. I might come in and add a little more of a lighter blue or a little bit uh, something else here on, on the sides, and then I'll seal this in. But I think this is pretty killer. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it for sure. Um, I'm going to let it kind of continue to develop in the air a little bit more before I seal it. Because when you put the sealant on, it does kind of stop and arrest where um, the um, patina is at that given moment, okay, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so let me come back over here. I hope you guys enjoyed this little round of patina work. Um, I certainly um, I certainly had fun with it. Oh, and Emily said here, she's tried fuming on brass and it worked well. Great to know. Thank you so much for that. And Cindy's saying she likes the textured look that the salt gives it. I like it too, right? You want to take some of that salt off though, because that, you know, it'll knock down as you wear it and stuff, but knock some of it down, then seal it. And you should, you should be okay with it. Okay. So, um, let me get myself there. There I am. All right. Great to have you today. I hope you're having a great uh, and productive uh, Sunday. Um, and again, if you're watching this on replay, thank you again for joining me. Um, I wanted to also remind you that we do have, I do have um, my riveting class coming up on Saturday, July 10th. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. There's going to be a tech check and a little pre show uh, getting ready at 9.30. So class will actually start at 9.30, but the real business will start at 10. We'll go until four with um, a lunch break in there and you'll be able to interact with me as well as other students on Zoom. Um, I'm super pro proficient at teaching these uh, remote classes. So you'll have the best seat in the house right um, in front of your computer. You'll really be able to watch the demos really, really well. You can find me of course at Kate. Uh, on Insta at Kate Richburg on YouTube. You can like and subscribe there. My group on Facebook, Create with Kate Richburg, and my page, Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator. You can give that a follow and a like. Um, you can find information two places about me on the web. KateRichburg.com is kind of a general information site um, with uh, teaching things and stuff on it. And then you can find all of my supplies and my class enrollments at KateRichburgJewelry.com. I've got metal, I've got rivets, I've got all kinds of stuff up on there. And of course, you guys can also find me during the week um, at... Uh, beadshop.com uh, doing some great demos on Wednesdays and uh, Fridays will be returning in July. Um, all fun things bead related and we've got a lot of fun packed in. Um, and if you're into those trade beads, you can jump over to beadshop.com and grab some of those there. So that's my story. Story, you guys. I loved having you. Um, it looks like you guys love being here with me as well. So thanks again. And I hope to see you in my riveting class. Take advantage. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to record it so you can go back to it. Um, it'll be just like this. You'll learn just a jam-packed amount of stuff. So thank you guys all. Watch my social uh, for my next demo. Um, I have a couple other things I want to I wanna share with you. So thanks so much. I will talk to all you all uh, very soon. Thanks, everybody.